Hey guys, Lisa Salvatore here doing a video to talk about the upcoming Sagittarius season and the entrance of eclipse season as we close out 2020 because why not? Why not have some eclipses in the mix to add to a already frenetic year of change and unpredictability and zaniness, but also some little bright spots, uh, you know, what's the word, feathered along the path, right? Along the way. Okay, so uh, November the 21st, which is a Saturday, the sun will officially leave Scorpio and enter the sign of Sagittarius, the fire sign of Sagittarius. Um, so we go from water to fire. Um, Sagittarius season is usually the beginning of holiday season. It's not usually, it's always the beginning of, of the initiation of the holiday season. And typically at holiday time, we spend more time with family, we spend more time with friends, we're more social. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, the planet of expansion. It's very benevolent. It likes to lend to growth and increase and positivity typically. This past year, Jupiter has been traveling along with Pluto and Saturn and has been giving us quite a dose of reality and in some cases, hardship and change that we've seemingly had no control over. And now Jupiter is the ruling planet of Sagittarius. The sun is entering Sagittarius. Jupiter is still hanging around with Saturn, um, separating from Pluto. And as this goes along throughout the end of the year, there's this theme that's very present energetically of growth and expansion, but not without the hard work that it takes to get these new experiences or situations or whatever the case may be. And so there's a glimmer of hope right at this time. We can almost feel, we can feel the shift, even though in some cases there's still a lot going on outside of us that is seemingly feeling like out of control and we're not able to make heads or tails of certain situations and we're not really sure how things are going to pan out. There's definitely a very present feeling of that. But on the personal side, internally, um, it almost feels like energetically we're getting this um, feeling of just, okay, you know, there's some growth coming in. I can, I can work with this. I can do this. I, I know these are my strengths. I know these are my weaknesses. I'm going to put these to good use, whatever the case may be. And there's a feeling of optimism that should be present during Sagittarius season. I also want to mention that as of right now, almost all the planets are direct, which is excellent. We have not really had that all year long. I mean, Neptune is still retrograde and going to station direct on the 28th. Uh, Mars is still kind of, it, it, Mars is technically station direct, but he's still not quite fully direct. So we still feel a little bit of uh, the irritation present with that. Mercury is officially out of shadow on the 19th. So we're clear with Mercury. And so, yeah, so as we move towards the end of the year, we are getting towards all planets being direct. However, we do have eclipse season coming up. And so that can also feel frenetically and energetically charged and potent. It always is. So Venus also will enter Scorpio on the same day the sun enters Sagittarius, which is November the 21st. So even though we are moving into Sagittarius season, we still do have a very scorpionic presence because Venus, our planet of love and beauty and, and what we value, who and what we value is moving into Scorpio. So when that happens, there's still this element of depth of intimacy and going and plummeting to the bottom and looking for the answer and facing the shadow and looking for the truth. So yeah, there's still, even though Sagittarius is a sign that lends to being more lighthearted and fancy free, which might be damper, dampened down right now, given the world circumstances. However, but personally, it's typically a time of more optimism and faith and renewal and growth and travel. Um, but with Venus and Scorpio, there's still this element of, okay, there's still like a seriousness that's present and um, a wanting truth and wanting to uncover the secrets of the higher order or the higher mind or whichever way it's like we're seeking the truth, um, especially when it comes to who and what we value and we put a lot of emphasis on and also our financial situations. So there's still this presence and element of being serious about certain things, the important things in life, right? but also at the same time, allowing ourselves the freedom and the flexibility to have a little fun and live a bit because these past six to eight months have definitely felt heavy on all levels, right? Okay, then on November the 30th, we have the eclipse, our first eclipse, so of two. So this eclipse is, it's a full moon eclipse, 
So it's a, also a North Node eclipse, okay? The North Node is currently in Gemini, and this full moon will be at 8 degrees of Gemini. So this, even though it's a full moon, and full moons are about release, it's an eclipse, so it's heightened, so it's <laughs> mucho release, let's just say. So it's a lot about release, and eclipses are faded portals of change and energetic portals of time in which things enter and exit quite quickly and the door can close fast and we may or may not be aware of how and when it's going to happen or which way the wind is going to blow, but it typically does instigate change on a higher level. And it's different for everybody how this will play out. Um, but again, the North Node and the South Node are opposite points and they change direction every 18 months universally, collectively. They change direction every 18 months and we're currently in the North Node in Gemini, South Node in Sagittarius. These next two eclipses, nor, uh, this full moon lunar eclipse is uh, Gemini, North Node in Gemini, and then we're going to have the new moon eclipse, solar eclipse, on December the uh, 13th or 14th, depending on where you are, and that one is going to be a new moon in Sagittarius, okay? That's a South Node eclipse. So it's interesting because North Node is about growth and increase, but it's a full moon and we're releasing. So again, there's still this element of... Um, expansion that's very present but we have to be clear on what it is that we need to release for ourselves in order to get to that expansive reality so when i talk about what it is that we need to release this could simply just be a specific belief system or a behavior or a pattern it could also come in the form of projects situations people you know um again it's it's one thing that eclipses demand of us it is that we make some changes and that we get very real with ourselves about what needs to change. And if we don't do that, the universe typically will step in and do it for us under eclipse energy. Because like I said, it's intense, right? It, it jolts us, it wakes us up to where we may have been asleep or we may not have been asleep, but it's like we've just been stagnant or idle and now all of a sudden these, these, this astrology kicks up. And then again, depending on where it hits your own personal chart, it could be very personal for you or it may not really affect you at all and in which in that case you know you'll probably feel it more on the collective scale some fun fact um president uh current president donald trump's north node falls in gemini just going to mention that and again anyway north node south node that's karmic balance that's what that's what the nodes represent karmic balance okay so wherever there has been a karmic imbalance in your life uh, it's like these eclipses will serve to sort of set the record straight or at least want to set the record straight or, or precipitate something or some things in your life that will potentially set the record straight and put you on a path of f for your higher good, for growth and for um, expansive knowledge and being able to move you forward, okay? Now, now Gemini is also the sign of the twins. It's two. It is the sign that rules over communication, ruled by Mercury. So Mercury is also known as a trickster. So there's two sides to every story. There's you know two two sides to a face, right? So we want to be mindful of information that comes to us during this time of, the, of this eclipse portal, um, whether it's through written form, verbal form, who and where we're hearing it from, the sources that we're getting our information from. That goes both personally and collectively because there could be some trickster energy present. There could be miscommunication and misinformation. So you want to make sure that you track it all back to the source to make sure that what it is that you're hearing, seeing, being told or feeling is actually does actually have some sort of a basis in reality so that you don't just go off of idle gossip or chatter because Gemini is also the sign that rules over gossip and chatter, right? It's communicative. It likes to talk. So a lot of information comes through. So this could even be an epiphany that comes in through a friend telling you something that you've been needing to hear for months and all of a sudden you get that information and now you're, oh, okay, and now I can, now I know that I can move forward or this relationship can go to a higher level or whatever, however, which way that takes form. But it's about information. So be prepared for that on the global scale, on the personal scale, information coming to you could be through a likely source, could be through an unlikely source. Um, now, the sun and the moon during a full moon are opposing each other. So the sun is in Sagittarius, the moon is in Gemini, the sun is currently quincunxing Venus, and the, sorry, the, the sun is currently quincunxing Uranus at the time of this uh, full moon, and the, the moon is quincunxing Venus at the time of this full moon. So quincunxes are funky aspects that don't, like they're tr they try to connect, 
but they can't quite do it because it's just like a mishmash of information. So again, this is furthering, exacerbating um, the potential for miscommunication, misfired signals. Um, so even though there's potential for some really great growth and optimism and opportunity, we just want to be mindful that things can feel a little cloudy and a little muddled under this energy as well, because Venus and Uranus are also opposing each other during this full moon cycle. So, you know, again, Venus is who and what we love and value. Uranus is unexpected change and, you know, differing circumstances, things coming to fruition. So this could be very positive. You could, like I said, information, Gemini's information, hearing things, hearing something you need to hear, getting a piece of information that's gonna move you forward, um, you know, helping you along on your path. This, this does feel like a helpful full moon eclipse. Even with some if and with some negativity that could be peppered in there, because it's not always you know fairy tales and rainbows, right? Without light, we don't have the dark. Without the dark, we don't have the light. Blah blah blah. We know all of this. And again, Gemini's too. So you can't have one without the other. So keep that in mind too as we move along the cycle, and just know that um, you know it is going to feel highly emotional. The only saving grace, or one of a saving grace during the cycle, is that Gemini is the element of air, so it's mental. Moon is water and emotional. So we could experience the ability to like sort of detach a little bit emotionally if we're getting too heightened, too hyper, too hyper emotional and too sensitive. And again, depending on you and your own, you know, astrological makeup, you're going to be more sensitive and emotional or not. But this overall will be an emotional time. It will feel expansive in a lot of ways. It's like a mixed bag. So just make sure that you're taking taking things with a sense of seriousness, but also keeping your um, objectivity here and perception realistic. And again, watch out for idols, you know, watch out for gossip, watch out for misinformation, watch out, you know, if you don't hear it from the source, just question it. That's all I'll say, because, you know, words are blah, blah, they, can, they mean nothing, right? You wanna, you wanna feel, because it's a full moon, so it's a more emotional time, feel what you're being fed and told, and then you decide, how you wanna digest that and what you wanna do with it moving forward, if anything, but keep in mind with eclipse season, if we ignore certain things or have been ignoring them or, or trying to brush it under the rug, it is likely that over the next six to eight weeks before we start to cruise into 2021, um, changes will come up that will be, will feel faded and like you have to go that direction, okay? Take really good care of yourselves, guys. Um, happy full moon, do a nice release ceremony of what it is that you want to uh, lovingly get rid of in your life and what you would like to bring in and draw in and attract. Vision boards are great. Just, uh, you know, keep keep positive. It's Jupiter, it's Sagittarius season. Happy birthday to all the Sagittarius folks out there. I'm going to do a quick card for the um, full moon. Lunar eclipse. Yeah, try to focus on what it is that you want to increase, what you want to grow over the next year. And that'll be like a, a nice positive intention, right? Okay. This is the hanged man, okay? Funny, the hanged man is ruled by Neptune. And Neptune will station direct, like I said, on, on uh, November 28th. And I do know for fact through people that I've spoken to and my own personal experiences that dreams, the dream state has been wild lately. Wild. Expect that to ramp up during this eclipse, okay? During this full moon eclipse. Pay really close attention to what comes up in your dreams, guys, because right now you're going to get that psychic, that flash with Uranus present and it's like, and you know, just that flash of, it's like an answer. Like you're going to get an answer, like a yes or a no, or it's going to come in very quickly, and it could come in through a, a sim, you know, a symbol, um, a color, something you wouldn't normally. It would just be peppered in your dream, and you wake up and you're like, oh, I got it, Eureka, I got it, right? So that's what this represents to me, the hanged man. It also represents a sense of feeling suspended, and this could be because of in certain areas people are not allowed to even gather or get together or they're being restricted on what they can do. So you could literally feel stuck and suspended. Like, what am I going to do? You know, I could go and do this, but then in the back of my mind, I'm scared I might get sick or pass this on to this person. So there's a lot of um, suspension and feeling of like, um, you want to cut loose, but you can't quite do it. So go inward, 
sit with yourself and determine what the best thing is for you to do during this time and trust your dreams. Ask for signs. This is the season. Tis the season. I would say, honestly, guys, basically from beginning of November to the end of December, the dream state's like popping. So ask you know, your higher self, ask your ancestors, ask God, ask whomever it is that you pray to, believe in, love, speak to, to help you and give you an answer through your dream state because the dream states are, I'm telling you, I mean, it's funny. I, mine have been off the charts, weird, wild, and a lot of our anxieties are coming out through our dreams too. So it's like really, some of them can appear to be really negative when you really digest it and break it down. It's just, it's, it's help. it's, Facing, it's showing you your your deepest, darkest fears, okay? So look at it from that perspective. If you've had like a nightmare or a bad dream that's rattled you, look at the um, context of it and really break it down and see what in that dream reflects a fear you have in your daily life, like a deep-seated fear, okay? I hope that helps, guys. Um, I'll be back soon with another video. Happy full moon. Take care of yourselves. LisaSalvatore.com. Links are below. Bye.